So hello, my name is Kaidi Oda Sullivan, and I am here to talk about marketing your science. So I'm going to start with a little bit about me and how I got interested in marketing. Um, I am a clinical microbiologist, and I lead a clinical microbiology lab at the Temple University Health System in Philadelphia. Two years ago, I started an MBA, a Master's of Business Administration, and during these studies, I have encountered marketing. And I've been really struck by how useful marketing concepts are to advancement of science, education, as well as the individual, the individual scientist. So my hope is that everyone here will be able to leave with a nugget or two, a piece of information or two, that might be helpful for advancing themselves. So why is marketing important in science and academia? First of all, we all create products, believe it or not. So a product would be a grant application, a plasmid, an educational module, a patent. We make products all the time. And not surprisingly, we want people to be aware of the products that we create, and also we want them to buy in. And what I've learned through my MBA is that there's a science behind making this happen, and it's called marketing management. So what's a product? In short, it's anything that can be offered to a market that satisfies a want or a need. It can be a physical good, like an educational module. It can be a service, like a research lab or a clinical lab. It can be a person, like you or I. It can be a place, like a university. It can be an event, like ASM microbe. And it can be an idea or a set of ideas, like a patent or a grant application. So once you've sort of thought about the kinds of products that you create and what product or products you'd like to advance, um, a marketer would typically think about what they want to do with this. What are the marketing objectives? So marketers typically think about marketing objectives in two different categories. The first relates to optimizing customer perceptions. The second category relates to, not surprisingly, increasing revenue. So let's start with the first category. How do you optimize customer perceptions? You can increase brand awareness. People need to be aware of your product to buy it. You can optimize differentiation. So you want people to be able to say, this product, your product, is better than the competitors because X. You may want to generate positive attitudes, positive feedback, positive buzz about your product. And finally, you want, may want to generate brand loyalty. So you want people talking about your product, saying positive things, and saying, you should try this too. Let's talk about the sales perspective and the revenue perspective. A marketer may wish to uh, increase customer inquiries about your product. They may wish to increase sales, of course. They may wish to increase repeat sales um, or increase market share. So once you've determined the product or products that you wish to advance, in your marketing objectives, it's good to move on to an analysis of your environment, the environment in which you wish to advance your product. So marketers tend to use something called the five C's. Customer relates to understanding where does a customer look for information about products like yours? How do they decide what they're going to buy? What are their criteria? company. So if the product you're trying to advance is, for example, your research lab, that would be your company. When trying to look at um, pros and cons, strengths and weaknesses of your company, it's good to use a technique called a SWOT analysis. You might have heard of this. So looking at the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities that are out there to advance your, your company, as well as threats. A very useful tool. You may want to then move on to collaborators. Who can help you advance your product? the competition, who are your competitors, and finally, the context in which you'll be advancing your product. A really nifty technique to use here is called a pest analysis, looking at the political, economic, social, and technological factors that may impact advancement of your product. For example, if you are using your research lab as your product. If you were in 2008 or 2009, in your pest analysis, you probably would have noticed the, econo the economy was not doing very well. If you have a research lab, that's probably going to mean allocation of funds from Congress towards NIH funding is probably going to decrease. This is a major environmental factor for your product to consider. 
after doing your environmental analysis, the next step is called STP, segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Segmentation is simply looking at all the possible customers for your product and lumping them into groups. Targeting is simply deciding which customer segment you're going to go after. So for example, as a clinical microbiology lab, let's say I have a wicked, an awesome antimicrobial susceptibility testing service component of my lab. And my, the chairman of my department says, you know what, you might be able to use this to generate some revenues if you market this to other laboratories that might be struggling in this area. So I might say as that lab director, well, what target segment do I want to look at here? So I might say, well, let me target other microbiology lab directors. My lab happens to exist in the Northeastern United States. So let's just start regional and think about the Northeastern USA labs. And then you might say, well, you know, we're an academic lab. It's probably easiest to start out with a segment of academic lab directors. So that's a good example of finding a targeted segment. Let's move on to positioning. Now, positioning relates to how you're going to make your offering. Positioning is very, very uh, close to making a value proposition. A value proposition is what you are promising, what you are offering to your target customer. So when you're creating your value proposition, you wanna consider four things. Who is the target segment that you've selected? What are their wants? What is their product category? And finally, what's the key benefit that you're gonna be providing to them? So let's go back to the example that I just gave about the clinical microbiology lab with the really awesome antimicrobial susceptibility testing section. So I might say, to microbiology lab directors in the Northeastern USA, the target segment, we are a reference lab, the product category, that provides resistance testing for new drugs so that you can offer testing before you've had a chance to validate that drug within your own lab. So that would be a possible um, value proposition. So now you've decided on the product you want to advance. You've decided on your value proposition. What comes next? Well, you need some tactics. How are you gonna actually do this? Marketers like to call this a marketing mix, otherwise known as the four Ps. Product, we know what a product is. Promotion, which relates to how you're gonna communicate details about your product and how you're gonna communicate the value proposition in your offering. Placement, where you are going to place your product so that customers can engage with it and hopefully buy it. And finally, price. So let's talk about these in turn. The product. So we've talked a little bit about different products that we create in science and academia. This is another way to think about it. What are all the components of the product that you wish to advance? Every product has a core benefit, a physical entity, packaging of some sort, um, a pre and post sale service, as well as intangible aspects like a brand image. So let's go back to the clinical microbiology lab that I, that I just described. The core benefit of a clinical microbiology lab would be to provide test results, lab test results. The physical product would be the result, which is typically provided through an electronic medical record to physicians. The packaging would be the formatting, the clarity, the language, um, how useful the results are to the clinicians accessing the results. Pre and post service sales could involve consultations that physicians would like to pursue um, with you to better understand the reports or if it comes earlier in the testing process, how to submit specimens optimally so they get the best test results possible. And finally, let's talk about the intangibles related to the product. This would relate to the reputation of the lab, how people feel about its efficiency, about the friendliness of the staff, and how helpful the staff are. So again, when you're thinking about the product itself, think about the entire product and what you're going to be offering. Let's move on to the next piece. So this is promotion. How are you going to communicate your offering to your target segment? So when we talk about promotion, I like to think about this in three different categories. Paid media, owned media, and earned media. So paid media is what we've traditionally thought about in terms of promotion. So this is the kind of uh, messaging that you would pay somebody else to do for you. A TV ad, 
a magazine ad, a newspaper ad in, in, the, in this day and age, digital ads, online ads. Owned media relates to media that you control, however, you don't really pay for it. So social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, a store, like a Gap store or a Mac store, that would be owned media because you get to control the displays, you get to control the signage, you get to control um, the customer service. Um, another example of owned media would be a corporate website. So the ASM website, believe it or not, is owned media. And finally, is we have earned media. So this relates to anything, everything and anything that people say about your product. So this can include word of mouth, social media, a Facebook like, um, commentary on Instagram, um, on Twitter, anything that's said about your product in a, on a Twitter feed. Two points I'd like to get across with respect to all of this messaging and all these kinds of media is that paid media and owned media, while you have a lot of control over the messaging, there tends to be a lack of authenticity associated with that because the customers know that the people who are producing the product are controlling the message. For authenticity, it goes in the opposite direction. So paid media and owned media doesn't tend to have a whole lot of authenticity. However, earned media, which the producer of the product can't control, tends to be considered a lot more authentic. So this is a really nice example of own media. Um, this is Dr. Jason Gallagher, who happens to be a pal of mine, a research collaborator of mine. Um, and he has, as you can see here, a Twitter account. And in my opinion, he's done a really nice job of using this to further his brand. He mentions that he's an ID pharmacy professor. Um, you can see that he has over 4,000 followers. You can see in that little square there that he is editor-in-chief of Contagion, a very prominent um, resource of infectious diseases information. And so through this, you can, as you can see, you can use owned media, social media, to advance your brand, advance your cause, advance your profile. Finally, earned media. In the olden days, if you published some research, it was difficult to sort of gauge what people were saying about it, maybe in some conversations, maybe an editor or another um, prominent researcher might write a commentary on it, but that was kind of the extent of earned media and science until social media came about. So this happens to be a Twitter posting um, that I noticed after I gave a talk at the Society for Healthcare Epidemiology meeting, uh, spring meeting. I gave a talk and shortly after, um, this gentleman posted, love the talk on the role of micro epi, uh, pardon me, micro lab in the healthcare epi from Kaidi Otis Sullivan. I was thinking, oh, excellent. Unfortunately, earned media on social media isn't always positive. So this is from a series of Twitter postings that uh, occurred in conjunction with a talk I gave at ID Week uh, last October. And I realized after the fact that there was an organization that was doing pretty much a live slide-by-slide -slide commentary on my talk. I thought, wow, they must really be interested in this subject matter. And as you can see here, there are some positive comments and there are some comments that really disagree with what I was saying. So again, the point with earned media is it's very authentic, but it can, the feedback can be positive or negative. And I'm going to finish up here with placement. So this is the other P in your four P's in your marketing mix. Placement relates to where you're going to place your product so that customers can engage with it, look at it, um, play with it, and determine whether they want to buy it or not. This is one example of a scientist um, who created a really, really interesting um, educational resource. Um, in the middle is her blog. It's called Creepy, Dreadful, uh, Wonderful Parasites. It was created by Dr. Bobby Pritt from Mayo Clinic. And um, what she does is every week she posts a case with pictures, with a short description, sometimes some videos. And then shortly after, she provides an answer key in which she provides the solution to the diagnosis. Um, it's an incredible resource um, that she's maintained for a number of years, and she has a considerable following. What she has done, however, is she has leveraged a number of other channels where she placed her educational product. She has put it on Twitter, as you can see on the left. She has placed it in LinkedIn, as you can see on the right. She has also done podcasts 
related to cases from her blog. And as you can see on the right, she has definitely been at ASM Microbe presenting cases as well. So this is a really good example of how a scientist has created a very, very helpful educational resource and has used multiple channels, online and not online, to uh, further advance her product and make it available to a wider audience. So I hope that everyone in this room has found a way to find one or two interesting nuggets of information to further their science and to further their careers going forward. Thank you.